So now, after the recap, what is it that that we we are going to do in this session? One of the most important things that we normally do in the beginning of the biomimicry class, but we thought we'll postpone it to the second class, is what do you imitate? So right now, for the next ten minutes, we will talk about what do you imitate in biomimicry. So let me go to the presentation on what do you imitate. Yes. So what are we mimicking? We are mimicking three things. We are mimicking form, process, system. What is the meaning of imitating form? What is the meaning of mimicking form? You can see that, right? It means shape, surface, or texture, macro or micro. So therefore, when I imitate, what what can I imitate in biomimicry? What can I mimic? I can mimic form. It's always nice to follow up something that we say with an example. So, what could be the example for imitating form? That's it, right? Do you recognize this? This is going to be there. This is going to be very, very soon in India too. The bullet train. The bullet train is an example of imitating form. Why? Very quickly, just go through that. Very quickly, and you will find. That the Shinkansen bullet train was the fastest in the world. It was traveling at 300 kilometers per hour, but the noise was a problem. People were actually complaining, saying there's too much noise, too much noise, too much noise. And then the engineer who was designing the the bullet train looked at what? Looked at? Looked at the Kingfisher. And then he noticed something very strange about the Kingfisher. He noticed that the kingfisher, when it was diving into the water, was making what is called a splashless dive, and he saw the connection. And that is where you know you will start to understand the power of biomimicry, the 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 the, the connection between uh, you know the it's called abstract to emulate, right? You will suddenly say, wait, the kingfisher dives into the water without any splash. Is there an answer that I can get from the kingfisher in order to make my bullet train a little less noisy? And see what happened. Modeling the nose cone of the train after the beak of a kingfisher solved the noise problem and helped the train travel ten percent faster, which was not intended. Right? That's an unintended but nice consequence. Fifteen percent less energy. So therefore, this is a classic example. One of the things that I would advise you to do, if you are teaching biomimicry, if you want to remember biomimicry, always try and find out if you can remember an example. So this is a great example of what do we mimic? We mimic form, and in this case, the Shinkansen bullet train is a great example of mimicking form. The inspiration is from the kingfisher. So what else did we learn? I'm just going back to those slides. What did we learn? We are going to we are learning what we are mimicking is form, process, system. Let's see. Uh, when you say process, what do you mean? You imitate the operations or behavior of something. So what could be an example for imitating the process? There you are. The sketch center. Now most of you who have heard me before, or most of my friends who have heard me before. If you meet them and say, "Yeah, Shiva is teaching biomimicry," first thing they'll say is, "Did he talk about the sketch center?" Because it's become such a popular example wherever I go. Now, the sketch center is in Harare. Harare is a very hot place in Zimbabwe. Now, um, there was this architect called Mick Piers. Mick Piers is an architect by profession, and he was asked to build a mall. Building a mall is not such a such a great thing, right? But what is so special about this 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 example? Mick Pierce was told not to use too much of air conditioning for the mall, to use to minimize the amount of energy used. Now, many architects would have given up, saying, "No, no, no! What is this? You know, such a hot place. How can I not use air conditioning?" But fortunately for the world. and fortunately for the world of biomimicry and fortunately for the world of energy mick pierce was not only an architect he was also an ecologist which meant that he was looking at 
at at at uh, at termites for in in this case and he looked at the termites and he found that termites i don't know how many of you have seen a termite mound iit madras there are several termite mounds he found that the termite mounds had look just read what is there please so termite mounds have a system of vents and channels to facilitate gas exchange to maintain near constant temperature right so that's what termites do to maintain near constant temperature inside their termite in the inside their mounds again go back to emulate you will keep on coming back to it emulate would mean what is it i am learning from nature and how do i translate that nature into a design strategy how do i translate it into an idea for solving a world problem the world problem that i have is i don't want to use too much energy can i imitate the termites and use the same principle in the skate mall that's exactly what he did and therefore what he did was use the principles of the termites you know if the principles of termites in the way they were building their mounds to regulate temperature and he used those principles in the skate mall and the results turned out to be fantastic much less energy was used i would i would implore you to just google eastgate mall there are some beautiful videos on the eastgate mall and it will help you understand the exact process that mick pierce used but for purposes of this session what we have learned imitating there are three things we can imitate imitate form which is the kingfisher example imitate process is the eastgate example and the third example is imitate system when you say system a system you will learn later on in system thinking is a connected elements elements of a system are connected to each other and all of them all of them are dependent on each other there is interdependency and there is connection so therefore a, a mangrove forest for instance uh, is completely connected many many elements in the mangrove forest like fish and plants etc depend on each other and it's a complete system over there so what is the example for mimicking a system is this one it's called a, a industrial symbiosis industrial symbiosis is an ecosystem approach to industry where one industry uses the waste of another industry as its resource right as its raw material which means just like the mangrove forest every one of those industries depend on each other for their raw material it's a brilliant example of of imitating process so what have we learned this is one more just just a picture of the kalenborg denmark industrial symbiosis you again google it please it's very very interesting i don't know how many of you want to want to go back to your village and create something like this maybe it will be very interesting to find out what you can actually come up with so essentially that's what we have learned we have learned that there are three things you imitate you imitate form example kingfisher imitate process example east gate center imitate system example the kalenborg industrial symbiosis kalenborg uh, denmark industrial symbiosis